I love people so much that it, it's hard for me to be alone. That music, it keeps me glued to life. You know, it's never not gonna surprise me how this guy went from doing the Hangover movies All right, everybody act cool. Let's just get it and go. <laughs> to making Oscar-level films. Bradley Cooper's second directorial effort, Maestro, is one for the ages. Centered around the illustrious life of Leonard Bernstein, its effort of portraying the man in question is really undeniable. The aura of pure Golden Age Hollywood is very much felt in the film's DNA, and that's not really only because of the black and white scenes or the fact that most of the film is in a 4-3 aspect ratio, but it's because it's sometimes held to a higher standard than most films, certainly those that are released by Netflix. Prestige is a word I'd probably tie to the film as a whole, but the amount of his life it actually covers really needs to come into question. And while there are an incredible amount of high moments, a lot of this really falls flat. Don't get me wrong, it almost got around that standard by the book biopic that you'd see in your history class. There's a layer of elegance and artistry that shines very briefly, but that's the root of the problem. I feel as though while Cooper has improved as a director, on top of his Oscar-worthy performance as Bernstein himself, it isn't all handled evenly. There are some times in the film where you're watching some of the most beautiful scenes ever put on film, and other times where it really holds back from getting that emotional push that it needed to be engaging or thought-provoking. A second or third gear to really drive home the film's story, even though it really feels as though that's on purpose and that didn't really sit right with me. It felt awkward jumping years and decades and not really getting a deeper understanding of the actual man of the hour. I'm sure you've heard already, but yes, both Bradley Cooper and Carey Mulligan, plays Felicia Montalegre, are phenomenal. Cooper in his very hot, cold performance when he's on stage, and behind the scenes. And Mulligan, while being mostly drawn back, gives a very great, subtle, yet emotional performance. It's just so ironic. I would look at everyone, even my own children, with such pity because of their longing for his attention. It was, it was sort of a banner I wore so proudly. I don't need. I don't need. And <laughs> look at me now. Now, I have my grievances when it comes to the story's cinematic impact, but I really liked how the film flips from Bernstein's perspective to Montalegre's perspective. It adds a level of credence to the film's story, or a level of authenticity that isn't really used a lot in the genre. It's a nice touch, but its surrounding parts don't allow it to be as effective as it probably could and definitely should be. The most interesting parts of the film are when no one talks, and it becomes either choreography, or a nice practice in editing, or the actual conducting scenes themselves. And almost every time those happen to be the best scenes of your film, it overall comes off as surface level, not knowing what to really say or talk about given the subject at hand. I wouldn't even say it's underbaked, but rather it felt mismanaged. There were plot points in the story where had they explored it more, it would have added another layer of complexity in the life of one of music's most iconic conductors. But it didn't really feel motivated to explore those crucial yet sensitive moments. Rather, it opts to flex its highlights and gives nods to those more critical and interesting aspects. A safe choice, but it doesn't make for a compelling film. To the point where I'll say, yes, this does feel like the biggest piece of Oscar bait I've ever seen, shown in bright flashing lights. Is the choreography exceptional? No question. Is it beautifully shot? Thanks to Matthew Libatique? Yes, it absolutely is. Do Cooper and Mulligan give great career best performances? Absolutely. Would I say it's overall a consistent and focused film on Leonard Bernstein? No, I cannot. It left me leaving wanting to know more about the maestro. And for a biopic, that's not really what you want your audience to be left with. I wouldn't say it's this year's Blonde, being that was a lot more abstract with its approach. And though it certainly looks that way as well, I'd say I wouldn't blame you if you felt that way. I'm feeling a decent 3 out of 5 stars on this. Let me know your thoughts down in the comments below. Please like and subscribe, and thanks for watching. Jesus.